Hey everybody, welcome back to my spare bedroom. It is a miserable, cloudy, rainy day here in Pennsylvania, and it is the perfect type of day to be inside working on a sewing project. So my friend's baby shower is less than a month away at this point, and I really need to get the other half of her gift done. So today I'm gonna work on the whole cloth baby quilt that I have planned for her. Full disclosure, I'm not a quilter. I think that people who quilt are so talented. It's such an amazing craft. It's really a beautiful art form. And someday I would love to learn how to quilt, but a person can only have so many hobbies and so many projects lined up. So now's not the time, but hopefully someday. What I do know how to do is make a whole cloth quilt, which is essentially, uh, it's essentially a baby blanket. It is two pieces of fabric with batting sandwiched in between them with some stitching on top. The stitching on top is the quilting. Today we're gonna make a really basic one with just some lines of stitching to hold all the layers together. We're gonna put some binding on it and that's it. It's very simple, very straightforward. I'm sure that there are people on here who are gonna say, That's not how you do it. You're doing it wrong. This is how I do it. I get really good results. The people that I have made baby blankets like this for in the past have loved them. At least they tell me that they love them to my face. So let me show you how I do this. I think it's gonna turn out great. It's a quick little project. So here we go. Let me run through the supplies for this project quick. Starting it off, we're using this vintage floral fabric that I actually found in my great-grandmother's sewing stash. This is going to be used for the front of the quilt. And then we also have this orange and white cotton gingham that I think matches nicely and we're going to use that for the back of the quilt. And of course we need some batting and I bought a crib size piece of natural cotton batting. You could use a polyester kind if that is what you prefer. I picked up some binding to match the green in the project. It's not a great match, it's close enough for my purposes today. And I picked up the double fold because that is what the store had on hand. So I will actually turn that into single fold bias binding later on in the video. And then I also picked up some thread for the project, some I had on hand, some I picked up at the store. The first thing that I'm doing is cutting my fabric into rectangles of the exact same size. And lucky enough for me, the orange gingham is already cut into a perfect rectangle in just about the right size for a baby quilt. So what I'm doing is just laying down the floral fabric, putting the gingham on top, and cutting the floral fabric to the same size as the gingham. The next step is to lay down the batting and then the gingham on top and I'm just smoothing everything out so it's nice and even and wrinkle free and then I'm trimming the batting so that it overhangs the gingham by an inch or two. The next step is to baste the gingham onto the cotton batting and I'm using basting adhesive for this. You could also use safety pins if you like but this is what I'm using today. This is very sticky spray used to hold the fabric to the batting while you're sewing it. So all I'm doing is just spraying this and then smoothing and pressing the fabric down on top of the batting. And the only reason that I'm doing the corners and not the rest of the fabric is because I'm almost out of this can and I need to buy some more. I didn't want to run to the store. I'm just working with what I got here today. You're going to see me placing some pins in the four corners of the gingham. This is so when I flip everything over to based on the floral fabric, I know where to line my corners up. So I flip it over, I grab the floral fabric, smooth it out, make sure that my corners are lining up with the pins that I already placed. And then I go ahead and I start spray basting just like I did with the gingham. I'm winding my bobbins with brown thread. And then I'm threading the needle of my sewing machine with white thread. And then I'm making sure that my needle is right in the middle of my presser foot. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter stitch length because that is what I like to quilt with. And we are just doing lines of straight stitches, four gingham blocks apart, all the way down, over and over again. And when we get to the end of the row, I'm going just a couple stitches off of the gingham and onto the batting, lifting my presser foot, turning, 
my fabric and then I'm sewing on the batting down to my next row that I'm going to start. Turn it again and start sewing back down the length of the fabric. And the reason that I do it this way is it keeps me from having to constantly cut my thread. I can just keep sewing one continuous long line of stitching over and over again. And then sometimes I get to the end and the way I turn my work, I have to backstitch to get to my next line of stitching. So you either just sew forward on, to, on the batting or you sew backwards on the batting. Either way, you are just sewing lines of stitching over and over and over again, trying to make them the same width apart each time. and all those parallel lines of stitches are done. Here's what it looks like on the floral side of the blanket. And here's what it looks like on the gingham side of the blanket. And now I'm going through and I'm trimming up all four sides of the quilt, getting rid of the batting that I left overhanging the fabric and squaring everything off and evening it up. Okay, so we are squared up. And now it is time to put the binding on. Before I sew this binding onto the quilt, I'm giving it a really good press. And while I'm ironing it, I'm opening the double fold and reshaping it into single fold binding. Here I am sewing the binding onto the quilt and how to do that could be a whole video on its own. So I've linked a couple videos below that I think are great resources on sewing on binding. And inevitably mistakes happen like this one here so I'm busting out my seam ripper so I can give it another try. I'm a little bit frustrated. I was sewing the binding, you know, I machine sewed it to the back and then I was gonna machine sew it to the front, but my sewing machine keeps skipping stitches. So adjusted my tension, played with that for a little bit, sewed it again, it keeps skipping stitches now. I'm noticing like in the quilt, there are no seams that were skipped. Yeah, there were no stitches that were skipped. So what I'm going to do instead of continuing to mess around with my sewing machine is I'm just going to uh, hand bind the front of the binding to the quilt. And the way that you hand bind is just with a ladder stitch. So it's easy. It is just more time consuming than doing it with a sewing machine. So I was excited. I was on track for this quilt to be done in less than three hours and now it's going to be like a four hour project because it's going to take me a solid hour or so to hand bind the rest of this so oh well you know what they say about best laid plans enough talking about it let's just get it done okay Blanket's done. Really love how it turned out. I really think she's gonna love this gift. It matches the afghan beautifully. The quilt took about an hour and a half longer than I anticipated it taking. I didn't count in um, hand binding. I thought I was gonna machine bind the whole thing. If I had machine bound the whole thing, it would have only taken me about two and a half hours. It wound up taking me closer to four. I worked on hand sewing for about an hour and a half, but it's a beautiful gift. She's gonna love it. I love how it turned out, I'm very happy. See you next time for another video, bye.